Hello crafty friends and welcome to my channel. I'm Adrienne Bosey of Alice Scraps Wonderland. Today I'll be walking you through how to create a mixed media canvas with a focus on creating windows with paper tearing. This canvas started with the idea of covering the majority of it with paper and creating a small peek through or window of canvas by tearing the paper. You'll start this project by tracing and cutting the paper to fit the canvas, then distress the edges of the paper for a more vintage feel. I've done this technique before where I cover half of the canvas with torn paper, but I haven't done one yet where I create a window down the middle, and I think this is a fun new approach to adding paper to your mixed media projects. What makes paper tearing so fun is that it gives an organic shape and you don't know what that torn line will look like until you finish tearing up your paper. For the peek through of canvas, you want the window to be just wide enough to fit your stencil. I used this slimline stencil from the crafter's workshop for the opening. Use your stencil to mark where you need to tear by creating two small tears at the edge, then tear all the way down the paper. For additional depth and texture, layer with the second paper, tearing and then trimming it to fit. Don't forget to distress any smooth edges with a distressing tool. After double checking the fit, glue the smaller strip to the larger pieces of paper with distress collage medium. Next, dry fit your papers to your canvas. Using a pencil, lightly mark where your window opening is, then remove your papers. Use your chosen stencil and a texture paste to apply stenciled texture to the marked area on your canvas. I used the Crafters Workshop light and fluffy textured modeling paste. To add color to your canvas, spritz distress sprays and water onto the canvas. I like to start with Distress Spray Stains for an initial shot of high intensity color. I then add Distress Oxide Sprays sparingly, as these are opaque and cover everything underneath. For a bit of glimmer, add in some mica spray. Remember, wet on wet mixes while wet on dry layers. For a distressed look, Flick water from your fingers onto the canvas and blot with a lint-free cloth to lift some of the ink. You can also splatter ink spray from the tube or paintbrush by gently tabbing the tube or brush over your canvas. To cover the edges of your canvas, use a paintbrush to apply your sprays. I like to use whatever is left over on my glass media mat and will spray more onto my mat if I need it. To highlight the texture of the stenciled area, place some white paint or gesso onto your nonstick craft mat. Don't dip into a pot of paint as distress sprays are water reactive and you'll contaminate your pot of paint. Then dry brush the paint or gesso onto the stenciled areas. If you want to add a little more interest to your papers, you can add some sewing to the torn sides. I also added on some lace, attaching it with my sewing machine. To glue the papers onto the canvas, cover the backs with Distress Collage Medium. I use the potted version of the collage medium over the bottled version for this, applying the adhesive with a silicone brush for even coverage. Press the papers and glue into your canvas, smoothing as you go. Then flip your canvas over and set some heavy jars on top for at least a half an hour as the adhesive dries to ensure it adheres properly. Draw a heart on a piece of chipboard that will fit on your canvas, then cut it out. 
I smooth the edges a bit with a sanding tool. Trace the shape onto another piece of paper, then cut it out and distress the edges of the paper. Paint the edges of your chipboard heart with white paint or gesso to cover the brown and make it more cohesive. While you are painting, if you have any resin pieces you'd like to add to the project, prime them with a layer of white gesso. I also dry brushed a mini grapevine heart wreath from my stash. Next, glue the paper heart onto the chipboard heart with collage medium. Then apply a rub-on transfer to one side of the heart. I selected a floral motif. Now it's time to start layering elements on your canvas. I use a combination of heavy body gel and foam adhesive. The foam adhesive helps to pop elements up so that each layer is even, allowing me to place the next layer on top. I also often dry fit elements before putting glue on them. This helps me to determine if I will need foam adhesive or not, or how many layers of foam an element may need. This is the part of the process that I enjoy the most. It's when you see your idea really start to come to life as all the pieces fit into place. After I have added the majority of the elements to the canvas, I apply a little bit of glossy accents to the edges of the paper flower petals. I then sprinkle on glitter glass for an extra dose of shimmery goodness. Be sure to tap the excess off and place it back into your jar. For a few finishing touches and different textures and finishes, add a few metal charms, a pretty butterfly from Renee Bouquet, and some gems. After those are glued in place, add a hint of color to the resin items with watered down impasto paint. Apply the paint, then blot the excess off with a lint-free cloth to bring back the highlights. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Until next time, happy crafting!